again, we're on the hunt to find Northern Ireland's House of the Year. The competition is open to all houses, from the grandiose to the bijou, 18 in all. Six will go through to our series grand finale, one from each show, but only one of those will be named House of the Year. So, we'll be making those all important decisions. Let's meet the judging panel. Colour is an intrinsic part of the language of design. It's really what can bring something to life. To use the right colour really highlights what is right and wrong about an interior. Good design is about clear thinking. It's knowing what you want to achieve. You need to spend a lot of time putting, going through the thought process of what you actually need to make the best piece of architecture. The things that I look for in a house, I suppose, are an atmosphere, character and individuality something that where people have expressed themselves in the space that they're living in to make it special for them. The houses in each episode are randomly selected from the final 18. Three judges, 18 houses, just one winner. Let the games begin. Two of our search, and as usual, we have three extremely interesting, distinctly diverse properties for our judges to appraise. But which one will they choose to go through to our final? Will it be this quaint and charming church like property with Gothic undertones in Hillsborough? Or maybe it'll be this circular home in Mahara, structurally inspired by the ancient site New Grange. Or will it be house number one here in Port Stewart, a real Irish Georgian charmer from the 1830s? This place well and truly seduces the eye thanks to an energetic and extensive refurbishment by its current owners. <laughs> property, which was in a dilapidated state, was acquired in 2007 by Stuart and Carolyn Moore, who had a, a clear vision for it. The roof was taken off and the house was gutted, then extensively refurbished. A large open plan kitchen living area, conservatory, music room and bedrooms were all added, almost doubling the original property's footprint. The garden features the ruins of numerous old dwellings, a 27 foot well estimated to be a thousand years old which was uncovered during the renovations. The original house was built in 1830. That's comparatively recently for the site isn't it? It is indeed. Um, we thought it went back to the 13th century but actually the archaeologists when they were doing an examination of the site um, find um, foundations that date from the 8th century. One of the things that I think um, works so well, one of the things that I think that it does so well like is the fact that it doesn't feel as if the history well, really has intimidated you. The history has intimidated you. So, really, we wanted the house to work for us. So, really, we wanted the house to work for us. So, although the history was important, that's why we chose it. And uh, we loved the old house and we loved the gardens, but it was very important when we were doing the interior that it had a blend of 21st century living and antiques. This whole modern section, this whole new section, mm -hmm. rhymes so beautifully with the uh, original house. But things like the floor, I think, you know, that's a real star of the show as far as I'm concerned. Where did that come from? Well, the flooring um, is 150 years old. It's oak and uh, came from an Amish barn mm. in the United States. And it's now um, our pride and joy. Mm. The flooring blends the old and the new. You don't feel you're walking to the old part or you're walking to the new bit, hopefully. Mm. You have to respect the building and its various phases and the site and its mm. history. But at the same time, not have it like a museum. Mm. 
quite happy to blend 20th century stuff, 21st you know, yeah. I think it's very wise not to have old men sleeping on chairs with caps on like a museum. That's never good in the kitchen. Oh, no. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there we go. A historical stunner of a house given a friendly face, modern reinvigoration. Now, I think what's so successful is the fact that this is a big area, but it's, it's, it's furnished, isn't it? It feels homely. It doesn't feel like an aircraft hangar. Absolutely, that's what makes this place. It's a beautiful period home, but with beautiful period pieces. Yeah. Look at those Turkish um, olive pots, I think they're incredible. You know, there's a lot of items which have been collected, brought back home, and they just, they work so well in this space. I think those pots are particularly good because they do create, they create almost like a screen, don't they? They yeah. don't block the yeah. view, but they and do. And the rugs as well, I mean, it's yeah. very well zoned. Yeah. Um, and then the chandeliers continuing through, I think it's nice. Yes. Because, you know, one of the problems with an area like this is you get a lot of ceiling. What do you do with the ceiling? And actually, chandeliers are a great way of furnishing it. Yeah, absolutely. And there's a lot of delicate little antique mm. pieces, the chandeliers, the delicate Georgian furniture. Yeah. It all works so well in the scale of this space. Mm. It's it's nice as well to see um, specific period details given a new lease of life, the picture rail, yeah. which you see a lot, but you rarely see actually used like this. It's beautiful and it really finishes and furnishes the room. It's a typical bit of 1830s decorating, which has suddenly been reincarnated. Yeah, I think it would have been a waste to have had two pairs of yeah. curtains there, and they've got a great spot now for a lovely painting. Yeah, yeah. A lot of clever details downstairs, a really nice atmosphere. Let's go and have a look at upstairs. <laughs> Tremendous sense of space up here. Isn't there? Huge bedroom suite. We're in the extension here and it's completely different proportions from the original mm. house and yet they've been very successful in combining the, the old and the new mm. uh, features like the, you know, the reproduction radiators there. This is a great room as a master bedroom, really sumptuous room. You've got your sleeping end here and a very clever thing, they've created the wall. Yeah with the wardrobe space behind. Isn't One thing I would say is that they, the downstairs, they've done something very clever with the space, which is to break up its centre with some sofas and a, an island. You'd, I'd like to see maybe a table in the middle here, maybe a bunch of flowers, something to... Saying that, they've, they've got some nice art about it, they've yeah. got the bookcase, but yes, I know what you mean, they could maybe have added something else. Make it a bit more intriguing. You do have course. this little sitting area here, which this is a nice is feature. And then you've got a quite a good-sized balcony there. And actually from the balcony, you've got a lovely view um, over the sea and mm. towards Donegal. Mm. Again, it's that quite old-fashioned Georgian Victorian idea about the master bedroom suite. It's That's not right. just a bedroom and a bathroom here. There's a dressing area. There's a study area. Space in its own right. The, the ensuite as well is really luxurious. It's like a boutique hotel yeah. when you go in there. And again, there's another bedroom, a good size with an ensuite, which is actually accessed through what looks like wardrobe doors. They've been very successful, I think, in combining the old and the new. Well, there's no doubt about it. Inside, there's a real sense of fusion between the old and the new existing side by side. But how does it work outside? Let's go and have a look. You can sense that this place is kind of ankle deep in history, but it does have a very contemporary and very energetic sense to it, doesn't it? I mean, it's not, it's not a sort of a a fusty museum, it's not stuck in time. There's a real yeah. feeling that um, yeah. Stuart and Carolyn are bringing it, you know, bringing yeah. it up to date. It's got a certain warmth to it, and this yeah. house answers the question of how you make a grey house in this country feel warm. Mm. What they've done is add a texture to the whole building. The Virginia creeper, the gravel that we have, this is the perfect gravel. It gives a little bit of warmth to the whole thing, and then the rough edges of stone. Have you found perfect gravel? This is it, yeah. And it's got all the lovely, the lovely crunch as well. I want to hear the noise of that gravel. This is this it. This is perfect gravel right with a lovely crunch. Makes yeah. it sound like breakfast syrup. What I love about it is the fact that it has no sort of overall symmetry, even though an elevation like that is obviously very Georgian and it's very peaceful and it's yeah. very serene. It's then going round a corner and there are conservatories. Yeah. And there's always a surprise, isn't there? Yeah, they've taken what was a very simple Georgian house that was close to the road with two entrances, which was a very grand house in his day. And they've also, they've kept the feel of it, but they brought the scale of it down. Grandness is something that's a little bit easier. So there we are, house number one. An impressive history, but also a very, very pleasant present. Now on to house number two. Our next property is an almost entirely right angle free zone. 
It's a contemporary reinterpretation of the ancient site of New 